Okay, I guess we're all set. Let's do this. And good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back to my stream. I'm Pierre, your host. I hope you're all doing great. I know that I am. So let's not waste any time. Let's do like we usually do. Let's go over to the computer. Let's check out what we did yesterday and let's tackle our day from there. Okay. So what did we do yesterday? Well, we basically worked on our hourglass. So that is basically what we did most of the day. Started off, of course, with the sand. Then we filled in the backgrounds. And eventually, when we finished that, we moved on to the heart, which is going to be in the space of our painting. And that is what we did yesterday. So what are we going to do today? Well, today we are going to, I'm going to start off by adding just a couple of leaves of these white leaves through my, look, my uh, hourglass. Then I'm going to do the heart, give this time to dry, tackle the heart, maybe even the actual space. And then we'll come back to the hourglass and we'll do a black outline to it. So that's basically what I'm aiming to do today. And I'm not going to waste any time. I'm just going to get some white paint together here. And... Uh, I have some right here. Just get a little brush. I really am going to use the white that I have in the cap of my can of white paint because I really just don't need that much. So got a little brush right here. My paint is still just the right texture, right consistency of what I like to paint with. And actually, I am going to use another container, put the paint that I have on my brush in that, and I'm going to dilute it with water. Dilute it a lot so that it's actually kind of see-through. So it'll look like almost like watercolor. Okay, I got that done. Let me bring over my other camera. Bring that closer so we can see what we're doing here. And I'll zoom in. Just like that. And I'm going to switch over. And we can tackle that right now. So I just want to put in. There we go. Just a very light almost a hint of the flower. There we go. That should dry in no time. Maybe just add a little bit more right there. And a little second coat right here as well. There. Okay, very good. Oh, and I might as well. Let, let me just add another one. I don't know. Let me just think this out for a second. <clears throat> I'll step back, take a look. And maybe I'll just add a little one down here that will go into the thumb. There, like that. And just like on the other side, I will add a little bit of these little white buds just like that here and there there very good okay so let me come back to over here So let's tackle the heart. So the heart is going to be orange on one side, red on the other, and the ring is going to be gold. And I'm going to start off with the ring. 
So where is my gold paint? It shouldn't be very far. Where are you hiding? Okay. That is pretty odd. I usually have the gold of close by. And here I actually don't see it unless it's no down here. Well, did it fall on the floor? I don't see it on the floor either. Well, what the heck? Where is that friggin' gold? It's a big tube too, so it shouldn't... Uh, let me go back in my kitchen area, see if I can find it back here. Well, I have another tube, brand new tube of gold that hasn't been opened yet, but this is not. I have another tube like this that is really, that I use almost regularly, use it just a couple of days on these white flowers. And for some odd reason, I don't see it here. Maybe in my little living room over here. Nope, I don't see it here either. So. And that is very weird. At least I can change my glasses. That is very strange. Very bizarre, but okay, let's not waste any time. It has been uh, really cold in the studio for the last five days. It must be winter's uh, last stand before spring comes in, but uh, there we go. So I got my gold. I am just going to work it a little bit to get for it, of course, to be the right texture, right consistency, so it glides on easily. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water and I'm going to work it for a few seconds. Just so it gets nice and creamy. So it just glides on with total control on the canvas. And this gold is a little reddish. It's a little different than the gold I usually use. Or is that an optical illusion? I don't think so. What does it say on the tube? What kind of gold is this? Iridescent. Iridescent precious gold. God, they always give these names. Can't get two tubes to have the same name. Every brand has to give it a different name. So we'll use this iridescent precious gold, which still doesn't solve the problem of my missing tube, which I'll worry about later. So this looks pretty good, maybe just a little thick. I'll add just a little dab of water more and we'll be ready to go. There's not much of a surface as you can tell. Really, one square inch, maybe, if you add it all up. There we go. So let me get rid of the excess paint on my brush. So I don't have any. There we go. So I'll bring the camera up here. Just move it a little bit to the side, which does a little bit of distortion. But... At least I won't be in front of the lens. So, there we go. 
Let me just switch over. I'm, I'm just checking one more time for my other tube of gold because I just love that other too. It was nice and bright and yellow. Didn't have this little red uh, tint that this gold has. And I'm just amazed that I can't find that tube. Really very surprised about that. Just going to walk over here, see if it's not on the floor. Don't want to make an obsession about it, but at the same time, I like solving mysteries. And this indeed is a mystery. The mystery of the missing gold. Okay, well, screw it. So let me get back to camera number one and let's start painting the ring to our heart. So, here we go. Well, on the canvas, this gold is very nice, I must admit. So the whole heart will be outlined in black. So if I screw up a little bit, I can always catch, catch everything as I do the outline. There, very nice. Okay. So now, I guess I'll reuse the same brush. I love this little brush, just the right size. And let's tackle the orange. Now you're going to say I'm going to need some red and some yellow, but I use so much orange that I just bought a, a can of orange. Just makes it easier, makes me work faster. And I am one of these impatient painters who loves to paint quickly. <clears throat> that comes from making years and years of painting on paper and gluing my paintings on the streets of just about everywhere as I've traveled to, from Berlin to Paris to New York, Amsterdam, you name it. So painting posters for years and years means that you have to paint very quickly and very repetitious because it was quantity rather than quality. And then as the years went by, well, quantity became more of quality and whatever. But a lot of fun to do. Uh, doesn't bring you any money because your paintings are all glued in the streets. You know, that's what street art is all about, right? Bringing color to the grayness of cities, of city streets. And it's a lot of fun. So there we go, my knife is nice and clean, my orange is here, and just like with the gold, I am going to work it a little bit so it gets to be nice and uh, creamy as a texture so that it glides on the canvas beautifully. There we go. I think it needs maybe a little more water. Of course, with the coldness, uh, all these paints are a little stiff because my studio is not heated. That is why I have a leather jacket and a t-shirt and my big winter shirt on. And actually my pants are my uh, 
the pants I wear to go in the street. I didn't even bother putting on my painting pants because uh, the idea of stripping in this cold just didn't seem like a very fun thing to do. And since I'm not splattering any paint and I'm doing very delicate work, I, uh, unless I'm really sloppy, I should be able not to put any stains on my clothes. I should be able to get away with it. But usually, of course, when I come in the studio, I change my clothes as not to worry about being uh, sloppy and getting paint all over the place. I usually don't care. But anyways, there we go. I think the paint is just the way I want it's dry. So let me just look back, get back to the heart. Very good. And I'll switch back to camera number one as we put down this first coat. I'm not sure if we'll need two coats of orange or, or not, but let's start off with this first coat. Nice and thick. There we go, very nice. Again, all this will have a black outline to it. Very good. Very easy, very quick, very simple work today. And now what am I looking for? I'm looking for the red. Some cadmium medium red. Let me put this brush down, get my faithful knife out again. I guess I can use the same palette, just in a different area. There we go. Again, not going to need very much. And this time I probably have like a, a half of a square inch to paint. So let me just clean off my knife again. Something I like to do right away. There we go. Keep my knife nice and clean. <clears throat> and when I mean nice and clean, uh, this is what I mean. You can see, I consider this a very clean knife. <laughs> okay, so let's get back to our heart up here. I'll come back in a little bit. There we go. So put the knife away. Let me get this paintbrush again. Very good. And just like before, I'm just going to take a few seconds to add water again to get the right consistency of this paint so that it glides on the way it should. There we go. This one doesn't need that much work. It seems to be already the consistency that I enjoy. Okay, very good. That looks pretty good. So I might have to put a second coat of orange and probably of the red too. As it dries, I can see my brush strokes and a little bit through the paint, but whatever. So let's get the red done. I'll come over to camera number one And I'm going to add this red paint right now. There we go.
Very good. I'm going to put it on nice and thick like that. Maybe tomorrow I won't have to put a second coat on. There, just like that. Very good. And eventually right here and right here, we'll put some yellow and then we're going to outline the whole thing in black. And it looks like even the gold might need a second coat. We'll worry about that when it's completely dry. And it's drying quite quickly, even though I put it on rather thickly. rather thickly. Is that English? Hmm. Who knows? Who knows? Well, I'm sure some people do. Apparently, I don't. Okay, I'm just going to step back for a second. Take a look. And that looks pretty good. So, you know what? Since we have some gold right here, I am going to go ahead and work on my space. I just love space. Everything that has to do with astronomy is just one of my favorite, favorite things uh, that I love the most. And actually, uh, actually right here, I'm going to show you really one of my favorite pictures is this one, the Hubble Deep Field picture, which is just extraordinary. I mean, this picture was taken by the Hubble Space Telescope, and it's as though you held a needle at arm's length, and through that eye of that needle, kept the camera on that spot for 72 hours, and they came up with this picture. Every dot you see in this picture is not a star, it's a galaxy. Unbelievable. One eye of a needle's worth of a galaxy. So you can see that there are billions of galaxies in our cosmos. Just simply mind-boggling. Wonderful picture. Oh, I just love it. Just love it. That is where we live. Okay. Let me get back to my own space area right here. And I'm going to start putting on little stars. So. What's happening to you, my friend? Why are you losing it? There we go. Okay, so let's come back to this camera right here. I'll continue my little stars. There we go, just random.
There we go. Mm-hmm. Like that, very good. There we go. Well, this has to balance out, so I don't want to put too many stars either. So, how does that look from afar? Well, I think that's going to do the trick. I'll bring the camera back just a little bit to get an idea of the whole thing. Maybe I'll even move the camera in front so it's not as distorted, just to have an idea. There, that's what we did. Where we have white all around here, well, this will eventually be painted black with a lot of little details on it to make it as attractive as possible. So, very good. I'll move this camera back over here now. Just gonna step back for a second and see where I'm at. Okay, look at my little heart. That seems to be okay. I'm, I guess we're gonna get back to the hourglass and I would like to uh, I guess put do an outline to that I think I can do that now so let me just grab my chair that I used yesterday there you go plastic to wrap up the canvas when it's all rolled up to ship it to the States. There we go. And Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'll move this over here, bring my black paint over closer. Looking for my knife, checking out the computer, making sure that the camera's 
and my brain are on the same wavelength. And just like before, I'm going to work this paint with some water so it's like almost ink. A little thicker than ink so it keeps its opacity to a maximum. Because there's no way in the world I'm going to want to put two coats. There we go. Got the knife all clean. And I'll just use this bigger brush to start off with just to get the right texture of this paint. And then I'll use a very thin brush for the outline. So let's get some water and work this. Mix this all up. I'm going to need a lot more water than that, though. There we go. So, this is cool. I'm starting to enjoy this. I'm back into a routine now, which means that setting up the cameras and Everything for the stream now is pretty easy to do because we've had seven weeks off. Woohoo! Seven weeks off where we didn't have any electricity in the building actually because of some uh, electrical work that was done in the street. So we were shut off of electricity and the first four weeks didn't matter because it was right in January when it was at its coldest. So I didn't mind not coming in, not doing the stream, not painting for several weeks. But I must admit, after five weeks, uh, I was starting to lose it. You know, it was kind of as though I was confined because of the virus at home or something. Really felt like I was on lockdown. I was starting to really crawl up the walls. And then finally, finally, we got everything uh, resolved. And then it just took me uh, apparently two, two to three weeks to get back into the groove. Uh, that first week I was so rusty, it was terrible. And then I did get the, a different uh, microphone. And that also took a few days to, to figure out what was screwed up. I couldn't, uh, couldn't quite get the, the settings uh, the way I wanted them to be so and then I must admit this week has been just like uh, it was uh, last year very smooth and just becoming extremely enjoyable to be back in the studio and painting again and this paint looks like it's just right now finding the right paintbrush I mean, of course, if I screw up, which I probably will a little bit, it won't matter because I'll always be able to go back and fix it, right? It's always the same thing, but I like uh, the idea of, uh, you know, of like calligraphy. What goes down stays down. Even if it's a mistake, well, you just leave it. And that's, I like that kind of philosophy because it was a, an influence of Chinese, you know, Chinese art, Japanese art. So I'm just pulling out all the brushes that I have that are so tiny. And then I'm going to compare them and pick one that I'm going to use. So... I see one that the handle has a lot of paint marks on it. So I'm assuming this is the one I usually use or that I've used the most. This one looks brand new. I don't think I've ever used it. So I'll put this one away. And then I, these look like they've been used a little bit. 
So this brush says zero, 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 and that's how thin it is. The other one just says zero. And this one that has been pretty worn out says three over zero. I have no idea what all that means. I just basically look at them in the store and decide which is the one I would want to use. So I'm going to go with tempting to use these other ones here, these newer ones. I'm going to use this one here, this one in the middle that I has been used. Apparently, I can see by the stains on the handle of paint. This is the one that just says zero. So I'm going to go with the zero. And if I doesn't work out, I'll just switch. Huh? No big deal. Let me just get it wet a little bit. And I mean, I'm going to have to sit on this because I'm going to have to be very uh, precise and concentrated. So I'm going to move this camera over quite a bit to the side which of course is going to distort the whole thing, but tough luck. Let me just move it over even more like that. And I might still be in the way of the lens, but I'll just go to the double camera right here. And hopefully something will be watchable. So let's try that. Let me get over here. Get comfortable. There we go. Okay, this looks like I'm in the right position. And uh, let's go for it. This is indeed a very thin line. There we go. So I'm going to step back, take a look from afar. OK, that looks pretty good. I'm going to continue in just so I can concentrate. I'm going to play some music. So the music is my friends uh, Diego on the violin. I have Lucien on the drum and Jacek on the guitar. So friends of mine that lend me their music so I could play on the stream like that. I didn't have to worry about copyright and YouTube banning me because I'm ripping off music off some poor millionaire that needs his extra bucks. So let me just put the music on and get back to work.
Okay, so far so good. I have to do a few touch-ups here and there, but we'll worry about that afterwards. Okay, just like that. And I am going to have to do a few touch-ups, which I'm going to do right now. just going to go back and add a little bit of this yellow paint on my black line of the hourglass itself just so it's not that obvious
There we go. Just want to paint over the black just so it's not as Very good. And I'm just going to go back and add. Oh, crying out loud, there's my gold. Jesus. Okay. Well, that problem is solved. And I just want to add a little bit of beige where the sand is trickling down. There we go. Okay. So. We were in the middle of summer, the heart here, all this would be dry. Unfortunately, it isn't. Okay, so, where are we at here? I'm going to stop the music for a few seconds. There we go. Thank you, boys. Much appreciated. And uh, for today, we are basically done for today. And tomorrow, we will finish the, the heart and then tackle the the masked uh, bandit there. Tomorrow is Thursday. Our stream will be like every Thursday in French. 
and then uh, Friday start tackling maybe, well, we probably have to going to put two, two coats for this for sure, then the outline. So probably do that on Friday. I'm not sure, not sure we'll be able to put the outline on Friday. I would like to, I would like to finish this inner part by Friday. But if I have to put two coats of, uh, of the cerulean blue, uh, it won't be dry by the time I would, ah, plus Friday, I have an appointment at 4.30. Okay, well, we'll take it as it comes. Obviously, I don't think we'll be, I'll be able to uh, finish as much as I was hoping to. But then again, it's not the end of the world. Let me just get this here so we have a, a shot of what we, where we're at today. There we go. I'll just, that little pop-up window. Thank you. Goodbye. And let's go back to camera number one. Just like that, we have an <clears throat> overview of what we've done so far. The hourglass our little window into space. Okay, very nice. Well, once again, I want to thank you for joining me. Like I mentioned a few seconds ago, we'll be back tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m., at least until uh, we uh, move our clocks forward on Sunday and catch up to U.S. time. <clears throat> then we'll be at 9 a.m. next week. But tomorrow <clears throat> and Friday, we'll start at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, once again, tomorrow is a good time to brush up on your French. As uh, I'm in France, and of course, I have a lot of French friends. So it's normal that one day out of the week, I stream in French. So that will be tomorrow. I am still going to leave you like I do every time with my schedule, even though for tomorrow and day after, instead of 9 a.m., it will be 10 a.m. So anyways, until tomorrow, I hope you have a wonderful day, a great, a great day, and I hope you'll join me tomorrow. Until there, ciao mes amis.